Today we will see how to configure eVPN using BGP. For this we are going to take Linux and FRR. This is a setup with CE1 and CE2 which is connected with PE1 and PE2. So BGP we are going to run between PE1 and PE2 and we will uh, do a ping from CE1 to CE2 so that it goes through the tunnel. We will check this. For that I am taking a docker setup. So in all my previous videos I have mentioned how to use docker. If you are not aware, you can check that. For in this case, I am using a bridge docker. So this is the EVPN bridge which I am cr uh, creating. This is the script. In default bridge now. This is PE node. This is C2 node. So all are connected to the same bridge. So I will just remove this script for removing the bridge once the rip once the bridge is removed we have to connect using this evpn so ce pe are connected pe1 and pe2 are connected pe2 and ce1 are connected so i'll just run the script so now you will have this configuration This is P1, this is P2, and this is P3. Now, since we have C1 and uh, P1 connected, I'm going to remove this IP, ETH1. It gives sudo. And in P1 also, I'm going to remove the IP for ETH1. I need 6 IP also, I will remove. The same way, I will do it in P2 also. P2, the connection is, ETH1 is between P1 and P2, that I am not removing. ETH2, which is connected to CE2, I am removing. So I'll put i net six del four zero zero one equal sixty four. I'm doing this so that we can configure any IP once BGP is up and we can start doing ping. So this is CE one and CE one also I'm removing. So once this is done. In C1 and C2, I am not running FRR. Only in F uh, uh, P1 and P2, I am going to run FRR. For this, we need BGP and OSP. Both are enough. So, I will enable BGP. Enable OSP. Same we do in P2 also. I will do sudo system ctl start. Now in PE1 and PE2, FRR is running. So first we will configure loopback IP. In PE1 and in PE2 also. In back IP ADDR set it. So now we will run OSPF to ping between them. So router OSPF, OSPF router ID 1.1.1. Input that loopback interface into the area 0 and also put the 12.12.0 slash 24 area into 0. So this is the OSPF configuration in PE1. We are doing this in order to run BGP on the loopback. So int loopback, sorry, router OSPF, OSPF area 0, sorry, OSPF router ID. Two dot two dot two 
network i'll put the loop back in the network and also put the 12 network in same area 0 so now you can see where spf is up and you should be able to reach to the other node you can check this 2.2.2 should be reachable from PE1 from PE2 you should be able to reach to 1.1.1 so this is the initial step but now we have not configured any VGP you can just check any VPN or VPN paths are there it is not there and L2 VPN also it is not there DGP so this is also not configured because we have not yet configured that. Now we will try to configure BGP. I am using IBGP. Neighbor, the other side is 2.2.2. Remove. Yes, IBGP. So I am using the same AS number. Neighbor, oops, sorry, that dot is wrong. Then update, you have to update the loopback. So the same configuration we can do in P2 also. Router BGP six five zero zero. So neighbor should be one dot one dot one. Remote AS six five zero zero zero. And you have to give update source loopback. So with this PGP should be up. Yes, PGP is up in both the sides. Let's see here also. Yes, it is up. But still we have not configured PGP L2 VPN. So for this, what is the configuration is to go inside router PGP. We have to give address family. Sorry. So address family. L2 VPN, EVPN and you have to give the other side's neighbor and just activate it. and you have to and one more command is there okay. you have to advertise advertise all VNI all the VNI IDs you are receiving here you are advertising in BGP update message this is the configuration now we will go to PE2 150 router VGP 65000 address family L2 VPN EVPN. Then you should give the neighbor as 1.1.1 .1 and activate. And you should advertise all the all VPN. That's all. This is the configuration. Now we will see VGP L2 VPN EVPN. Still, it's not up. because we have to advertise you can just check whether configurations are correct it's correct but it is not advertised because we need a bridge from CE1 to PE1 so E2 is the interface from PE2 to CE2 same way here if you see it is E1 is the interface now we have to create a bridge and attach it to that so that any packet coming from CE1 is just tunneled into this so for that in PE1 we have to create a configuration like this what is this is in Linux I am creating a bridge so initially you go out of the shell and you can just brctl show so that is no bridge so I am creating a bridge and making it up that is the first step you see this and I don't have any other interface like VXLAN so it's not there so I am creating a VXLAN interface with the VNID of 111 this means any packet which is tunneled with VXLAN will send with this route so that is why that is an RDRT it will put this message and send when we see the output we can know that 
so I am making it up this is the second step vxlan 11 so you can see this is the interface created so whenever packet comes inside this it has to put that vnlan id and it, it should send now I am going to attach till now if you see vrctl show this nothing is there now I am going to attach add if means attaching to the bridge I am attaching this eth1 interface and vlan interface now if you see these are the two interfaces attached to the bridge same type of configuration will do it in pe2 also I just explained it is the same thing but here I have to put eth2 because eth2 is only connected to ce2 so that's all that is the configuration now if you go to vtys you should be able to see all the three interfaces so vr0 eth1 and vxlan all three we are able to see but ip is not there because it is going to tunnel it now you can see l2vp so you can see it started learning with this vnid whatever vnid we have given with the rd rt is nothing but vgp's router id plus this the same thing i will check here show bgp l2vp and EP. here also you can check this is the rdrt but we have not yet pinged so we can do a ping and we can check so from here in eth1 i will just assign an ip with 7.7.1 slash 24 sorry and in uh, c2 also i will create same network it is like in the lan it is like in the lan so if you put if config you can see this so you can directly ping to 7.7.2 .7 so that it will go see actually it is working because it puts this see it has learned this and with this route ready vxlan packets you can capture the packet and we can check how it works so we can see the other side also so this also works now we can we have I, I have already captured in this PE interfaces in these two interfaces I have already captured eth1 and eth2 in PE eth1 and eth2 we can check the packets it has to put the tunnel lens and we will check that it's normal without vxlan because it is the direct packet received here you cannot see any of the vxlan headers and then in p eth2 when it goes then it is encapsulating the header you can see it is an udp packet with 4789 as the udp port and here we are encapsulating the VLAX, vxlan header with vnid 111 which we have configured using this uh, command if you see the vxlan id 111 what if you change this as per this it will go this is the port number which we have given exactly the same thing it is there and it is encapsulating the ethernet header or ethernet header icmp everything which is coming from the ce1 into the network so this is the reply so both request and reply are encapsulated in the vxlan header so when it goes to p2 eth1 eth1 also it should be the same can see that it to pass into the network so here also you have the same vxlan and with the same vnid sorry not this ah oh, this one same vxlan same vnid now we can go to the last interface so here it will remove and give it back so this is the packet capture actually we can try changing this to check whether it works that's why i removed the ip here I will just remove it. I will just put 5.5.1. It will work as a LAN. So, do I am removing? high network I will put 5.5.2 so it is working so this is the 
so we you can see this delta will be an EVP. So you can see this one one more entry is there show IP BGP L2 VPN and VNID. The EVPN here also you can see there is one more command BGP paths. Show IP BGP. This is the VRF which it uses. It uses 1.1 VNN ID. L2 BGP. With this, you can check. It shows that it is. Uh, learned through L2 VNA. If it is L3 VPN, this will be set, but there is a different command you can check. So, this is how it uses RDRT in the update message. This will be sent. So, this is how whenever you change, you are, we are able to see that because it just puts that in the packet and sends. You can try this, it's an easy step. So, So this is configuration, you just need BGP and OSPF, OSPF you should run and on BGP no need to give it will auto automatically take the VNI IDs. So you can just give neighbor activate, that's enough to all VNI IDs. In the second node, also exactly the same. This is the very easy configuration to learn eVPN, you can try this in the open source code. Thank you.